What's up, guys? Man, I know y'all love hearing me talk about snakes, so I had to give you your daily snake video. My buddy Jay Smith asked me to do a video talking about the difference in the northern cottonmouth and the Florida cottonmouth. So there's a simple version and there's a little more complicated version. And of course, we're going to start with the complicated version because it's way cooler. So forever and ever and ever, there was one species of cottonmouth with three subspecies. You had the western cottonmouth that ranged from West Tennessee, West Kentucky, Missouri, down into Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi. Then you have the eastern cottonmouth that ranged more in the coastal states. So, uh, you know, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, down to Florida. Then the Florida cottonmouth ranges all over the entire state of Florida and runs into southern Georgia a little bit. And then there's probably like a natural integration zone down there where they all kind of intermingle. So 10 or 15 years ago, the cottonmouth DNA was studied further. And what they found was the eastern and western cottonmouth weren't different enough genetically to be considered their own subspecies. So they were reclassified as the northern cottonmouth, Echistrodon pisivorous. Fun fact, pisivorous is the Latin translation of fish eater. The Florida cottonmouth, however, was genetically distinct enough from the others to be reclassified into its own species. So it is now a Kistrodon conati, which that name comes from a super famous herpetologist, Roger Conant, who described that species back in the day. So now the simple version is visibly, there's not much difference. The only difference I know of visibly is the Florida cottonmouth has two little brown vertical bars on his top lip that kind of look like a little mustache. But other than that, I don't think you could tell the difference, especially from distance. When I worked at the zoo, we did have a big Florida cottonmouth that was jet black, but I think that was just unique to that particular animal. It was just a melanistic animal which is melanism is just a genetic mutation like, you know, albinism or uh, hypomelanism, things like that. And another question I get asked all the time, is a cottonmouth and a water moccasin the same thing? Yes, those are both accepted common names for the cottonmouth. So here's another little tidbit. The Northern Cottonmouth's range does not extend east of Davidson County in Tennessee. At least there's never been a documented sighting of Northern Cottonmouth, east of Davidson County. This gets argued every day on the Tennessee Snake Identification page on Facebook. People say they see them all the time, and myself and others aren't saying that they're lying. We're just saying there's never been a documented, there's never been a photo. I've been a part of that page for, oh man, like six or seven years, never seen a photo of one east of Davidson County. Of course, I've fished Percy Priest and Old Hickory and Dale Hollow and all of those lakes out there i've never seen one and you know me i'm always looking so until we get a geotag photo of a cottonmouth east of davidson county it cannot be accepted that's all we need if you, if you live in east if you see this and you live east of davidson county and you see cottonmouths please safely get a photo and a geotag photo send it to twra put it on the tennessee snake identification facebook page send it to me i mean whatever it would be super cool and you know we have a new locality of northern cottonmouth in tennessee it's not like we're anti cottonmouths living in east tennessee they've just never been documented there so the next question you get is sometimes a little snide remark too is how does a snake know not to cross the border? How does he know where the border is? Well, the answer to that is the habitat isn't suitable for them to survive in in that part of the state. Many years ago, some organization released a population of cottonmouths into Coffee County, and within a couple years, they had died out. So they cannot survive in the habitat in that part of the state. I don't know the answer to why. I've kind of always wondered if it's an elevation thing but i found them in really you know cool clear water streams in middle and western tennessee and western kentucky and the exact answer to why they can't survive in the habitat in east tennessee is above my pay grade folks 
but anyways jay thanks for the question man y'all know i love rambling on about these snakes way more than them old fish but i am fixing to head up north to where the fish get big and brown and i'm pretty fired up about it also i'm going to be guiding to the end of september this year on the st lawrence river and lake ontario uh got a bunch of days open so if you guys want to come up and have the time of your life blasting them big old smallmouths, you holler at me. Thanks for watching, y'all. Later.